Hi, it's Tom here, and welcome to another Gradle best practice tip. And have you ever tried to build software and you found out that the version of the build tool isn't compatible with the project? Well, I've got good news for you because in Gradle, we've got something called the Gradle wrapper, which fixes that issue. And this tip is to always use the Gradle wrapper. And why is that? Well, it's really great because when we use the Gradle wrapper, we're using the version of Gradle that's compatible specifically with the project and we don't have any incompatibility issues. The other advantage is that for someone that wants to build the project, they can just download it and immediately start building it without having to have a local version of Gradle installed on their machine. And to show you how this works, I'm inside a Gradle project right here, and I've really got two ways to interact with this project. I could use Gradle and run a task inside the project, print message, and this will use the version of Gradle that I've got installed locally on my machine. And in this case, this does work, but it's not necessarily the case that my Gradle version is compatible with this project. The better thing to do is to use the Gradle wrapper, which is in the Linux environment, dot slash Gradle W space, and then the task name. And this time we're using a special script that comes along with the project and it goes off to the internet and downloads that specific version of Gradle and caches it on my machine. And in a similar way, in a Windows environment, we can run gradlew.bat space and then the task name. And the next question to ask is, what do you do if you're working in a project that doesn't currently have the wrapper? Well, that's very straightforward. So here's an example where I've got a project, and if I do try to run Gradle W, I get an error because there's no wrapper script. To add this, we just need to do Gradle space wrapper. This is going to use my local Gradle installation to install the wrapper inside this project. And now I can run the Gradle wrapper script, Gradle W space print message. And that works fine because Gradle space wrapper installs the Windows and Linux wrappers. And the next question to ask is if we've got brand new projects, how do we add the wrapper? Well, here's an example. Let's go ahead and create a brand new directory. Gradle wrapper example. CD into that directory. And I'm going to use the Gradle init command, which initializes a Gradle project. And I'm just going to accept all the defaults here. And this is a really great tool because it automatically adds the Gradle wrapper for us, along with initializing things like the build.gradle and the settings.gradle. So right here, I can run Gradle W space help, and help is a task which is available by default with every project. So I can interact with the Gradle wrapper script right away. And if you're wondering whether this should be committed into version control, then definitely yes. If we have a look here, we need to commit the Gradle directory, the Gradle W Linux script, and the Gradle W .bat Windows script. Those three make up the Gradle wrapper, and they all need to go into version control so that someone downloading your project can automatically run it. So hopefully this has added some more clarity around the Gradle wrapper, the advantages of it, and why you should always use the wrapper if it's available to interact with your project. And if it's not available, you should add it as soon as possible. If you want to do a bit more of a deep dive on the Gradle wrapper, then check out this video where I go into more details. And if you're interested in more Gradle best practice tips like this, then I'm releasing one tip every day for 30 days. So why not subscribe so you get to catch up with all these videos as well as other videos about Gradle in the future. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.